Welcome to Sustain This, a podcast where we discuss mindful consumption, personal style, and the quest for living a more intentional life. I'm Alyssa, a sustainable stylist. And I'm Christina, a shopaholic turned minimalist-ish. And I'm Sina, a color consultant and slow fashion style coach. Together, we will unpack the nuances of what it really means to be a conscious consumer and find more joy in what we have right now. So grab your tea, your coffee, or whatever floats your boat and join us in the conversation. Let's go. Yay. 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 (laughs) All righty. Coming at you from Copenhagen. Welcome back. So today, because we thought we, you know, we have a limited time being in the same room together on the channel, we thought we would do an Ask Me Anything. So we put out a community post on YouTube. You guys had a lot of great questions for us, so we're going to take some time to answer those today. Yeah, thank you for submitting those. They're so, yeah, really good, really thoughtful. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. and thank you for all the kind comments. We have the best community, don't we? Yeah, we we? do. Just like, you spoil us, honestly. 100%. 100%. (laughs) Um, Let's, okay, I'm just going to start at the top. Yeah. A bunch of people wanted to see videos of us out and about, so hopefully, I'm sure if you check out each of our channels, we're yes, all going to be all gonna have some vlogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fun. I'm retired and I travel a lot. I find that my wardrobe tends to look plain, especially when I choose traditional travel gear. I get this because travel, you have to be super functional mm-hmm. uh, and fly with carry on only. So how can I add? How can I feel feminine and fun? while traveling and also enjoying many other outdoor pursuits. So this is like that whole, how do I inject that feminine vibe while also being very functional? I really like the in, the idea of integrating your whole wardrobe to be functional across the board. You know, if I'm like going to the gym, I'm of course I'm wearing like my gym clothes, my leggings, my running shoes, my sports bra, whatever. But on the way to the gym, I'll like throw on a t-shirt and a blazer so I still feel like cool and within my style. I'm not going to like sweat in it. Yeah. You know, I'm not wearing it and I'm not and I and I bring a protective layer so that I'm not like destroying my blazer or having to do the dry cleaning. You know, instead of being like I'm going to wear my Lululemon jacket and my leggings and my thing, uh, my sports bra and on leggings, and then I'm going to, the, like, this is my gym oh, outfit. Um, so I really like that sort of way of integrating. But with this question, it sounds like she is doing a lot of, like, specific activities, like hiking and, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah, how would you how would you integrate? I think I would actually, we just talked about color, but I think if you're like doing all of these activities and you want to inject your personality into it, then I would look to color to create some of that, like coming back to yourself. So rather than, you know, there's, and there's so many options out now for things that are more functional, but still interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you've got to wear leggings, like maybe you get them in like, maybe not like a standout crazy print, because you're not going to be able to rewear them over and over, but like just a nice, like, beautiful color that makes you happy Mm -hmm. um and I think footwear is a big one too so yeah like when you travel if you're doing a lot of hiking you're gonna have no option but to wear those like solid shoes but then I find I just like this we've talked about this before like leaning into the difficulty like if you've got to bring along your hiking shoes then maybe you figure out a way to wear them or the leggings like Christina said like with a blazer or maybe you get like a cool bomber jacket that offers a little bit of functionality but it's in a really cool fabric like maybe like a silk or like a like some cool like vinyl or whatever so you're getting this like this little mix yeah. you're blurring right. the lines yeah. between it's yeah like the, the tweener in betweener moments like what do you wear what can you do in between so like i think another really cool thing would be like if you have like the hiking shoes um and you have to have like your windbreaker or something but you get like a really cool pair of joggers or something like yeah. the ones that you can wear like as athleisure and uh yeah. and even when you're hiking yeah. for me having like a nice like a neutral color then you know i could wear it with like my my running shoes or my hiking mm-hmm. shoes, but I could also wear it with like flip flops or flats even, yeah. um, like a pair of ballet flats. And I think that, you know, it kind of expands the function mm-hmm. um, and usability of your wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think like hair yeah, and, or even like some necklaces or accessories, exactly. like you yeah. might, you know, you might not want to wear makeup if you're hiking or whatever. Um, but just like throwing on a pair of earrings or something. Yeah. The way it makes you feel like you, yeah, you know, it, 
that counts for something too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's like decorating. You even did that on this trip, right, Alyssa? You have your running shoes as your only yes. pair of like sneakers, but you're making them work. Yeah. 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 And like, I think when you pack, I think it comes from a lot of intentionality when you pack. So like know your footwear and then lean into like the vibe of the footwear for mm. sure. So can you, can you go over that? Because like, let's say it's not for hiking. Let's say it's just like, I just don't want to uh bifurcate or trifurcate like I don't want to split my closet into like workout work mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. dinner like I want it to be more blurred or more like blurred, yeah more integrated I think you're doing a great job of that so let's say you have your running shoes yeah. What are you pairing them with? Oh, like am I, so the running shoes that I have like I was yeah yeah good call so I was I was oh it's gonna still work I was telling the girls that I was a bit disappointed. I, for whatever reason, like there are running shoes like that are technical running shoes that look cool. But like, if you have a specific, if you're a runner, like you have a shoe that you, that like your shoe and like the Zoom, these are the Nike Zoom flies. They're good, but they're not like, they're not the coolest looking shoe in my opinion. But okay, they're black. They've got a big chunky sole. So these are going to be able to carry the weight of a lot of like wide leg things. Yes. So you know what I mean? So immediately I was like, okay, I'm going to bring the wide leg pants. Also because the wide leg pants kind of like hide them a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, you got a yeah. camouflage. So well, no, I don't know. But then I also thought... Um, I also brought like a little black leather mini. So you would probably never think to wear these with a black leather mini. Like, I don't think it's gonna be warm enough. Maybe in Milan mini it'll skirt, be warm mini. enough. Mini skirt, okay. yeah. But because they're black, the leather mini is black. And I'm gonna, and again, I'm gonna wear like a chunky sweater. So there again, we're balancing out the weight of the shoe. And we're not really looking at the fact that this is a, like, it's cool, it's a sneaker. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's fine. But I love that like, you, you know, even be, let's, let's say you are about to buy a new pair of running shoes. And right. even even in that whole decision process, you yeah. go, okay, but they're n potentially not just my running shoes. Yeah. Maybe I need to like pack light and then wear them as yes. an actual part. Shoe, and that's yeah. such a good point because I knew this is a relatively new shoe for me. And these came in like, they come in like really cool flashy colors, but knowing that I would have to travel with yeah. these, exactly you like you said, yeah. I got them in the black and white because yeah. now I know they're going to do double duty, you know? Yeah. 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 So that was a... Yeah. That's it. That was a good question. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Why are sustainable brands often so basic slash boring? And how can someone who enjoys fashion support sustainable brands? Mm. Yeah, I love the whole there's actually like a a, a girl uh, in Denmark, her and like a professor, they wrote a book about how to dress better in the sense of how to dress more like responsibly too. And they they talk a lot about timeless, the whole phrase timeless yeah where they kind of say we can't really say anything is timeless yeah. like it does that phrase even exist and i think that's where it comes from that often brands will like do the timeless mm -hmm. design because it, it will live safe. longer because, yes. yeah yeah so yeah so they play it safe but really nothing is timeless if you think about it mm -hmm. right so I think I think that's where it comes from that they keep it basic yeah. keep it timeless so that it's not outdated in like mm. five years the other thing I find too is like a lot of like really sustainable brands I find it leads into a more bohemian kind of style sometimes yeah. too yeah, even true. so it's like either it's like super basic or it's uh super basic and by basic I mean classic mm. and then uh more more bohemian flowy kind of feminine so mm. there's like a, it's difficult to find in between and I feel like that could be um, maybe because like, you know, silhouettes and all that is changing so much and it, mm -hmm. or, yeah, so or maybe you need to use more like, you know, uh, synthetics, et cetera, like mm -hmm. to be able to pull off. I don't know. Like I'm not a clothing brand. I wish yeah. like we knew the, but you're right because they do like trend researching ahead of like designing a collection. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, what's the next like silhouette? So I think you're right that yeah. it's like a, a way to push back against like the constant changing silhouettes and the constant changing designs mm -hmm. to say, yeah. okay, we're sticking with this. This is timeless. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. so really, and we've like talked about that before. So really, yeah, of course, like focus on like supporting sustainable brands, like whatever that means. Mm -hmm. I mean, that phrase is even like, what is, what does that even mean? Yeah. Focus on like buying the right things that you want to wear over and over again. 100%. Yeah, so I think it's more like, of course they make those like classic timeless basics so I think it's almost like because like what does 
supporting sustainable brands even mean mm -hmm. in the sense of like, you know, if you thrift and find something fabulous, that's supporting sustainability in a yeah. way. Um, and if you mean, and if you mean like by shopping new, then I feel like almost like if you find a, like if it's like a really good sustainable brand and all they are offering are like those basics, then it's like, I do think there are some basics that can build your, you know, it's like your foundation. Mm -hmm. It's like the, um, it's like the first layer of that cake. And then, you know, then maybe you branch out and sort of build off of that, mm -hmm. out, out of that foundation of basics that are really, really great and sustainable. And then maybe you bring in thrifted pieces. And if you have to get a fast fashion piece or maybe a less sustainable piece, then, mm -hmm. um, because really the ultimate thing about sustainability, at least for me, is like, you're wearing it, you're keeping it. Yeah. It's not cycling through your wardrobe in and out. Less, you're yeah. wearing more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I think I would almost uh, suggest to the person who asked the question, or just in general, like all of us, like I like how you were saying, like the way I see sustainability. And I think it's really about um, reframing the question as not, maybe perhaps not so much how do I support sustainable brands, but we want to, and that's a good thing. But I think if you kind of go even like one layer deeper and ask yourself, how can I simply make more conscious choices in my life? Or how can I just be more sustainable just as a person without even putting shopping or consumption in the picture, then automatically you're going to start supporting these more sustainable sustainable brands just because you'll do things and shop in a way that aligns with who you are and with you'll end up buying clothing that you wear forever and ever yeah. and I think you won't get caught up in the in the marketing or in the this pressure that we put on ourselves to shop sustainable and to only buy da 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 because ultimately yeah. wear it love it forever that's that's the most sustainable thing you can do so and I think that just makes me think too it's like when I think of sustainable brands like when she asked that question it was almost like for me, I immediately went to the materials, yeah. but the other versions of sustainability are like, you know, maybe they put out, maybe they only have like one season, like they put yes. out, they have like a collect, like a core collection mm -hmm. and that's all they offer. Or like, or maybe they only do four seasons as opposed to weekly drops. Yeah. Like, so there's different things that you can, cause I think not one brand can cover all of it. Right. So 100%. it's also like, you know, being knowing what you're looking for and like what kind of checks those boxes off for you. Um, and it could be different brands doing different things. I like this one. What are the items that have surprised you in your closet slash things you didn't expect to like or wear that much, but have become a huge favorite? Oh. I have quite a few of those. I have one too. Yeah. yeah. Because I was I, on the plane, I was like going through my old photos and like deleting stuff because mm -hmm. that's all you can do on the plane. Um, and I saw like an outfit I wore last year with like, um, it's like this blue frilly top from oh, People yeah. Tree. Yeah, with I dyed hair. it. Yeah, yeah. It used I to be like white, that. but now it's blue. Um, and it's like, with like the eyelets. And it's yeah, little eyelets and it has like frilly sleeves and yeah. a little v-neck and it's very cute like very very cute feminine romantic which is not like something I would normally yeah. feel like myself in mm -hmm. uh, but I love that top like I can't wait for the weather to warm up so I can wear it again so it's very much you know that that was that's definitely been a surprise to me like going through my wardrobe because it's super old like I would have probably decluttered it but I've kept held on to it because it's more like okay well how do I then style it like how do I make it part of this more like laid back kind of vibe that I like so much um so yeah you do you have any oh, any pieces know. that come to mind I'm gonna say um it's this it's a silk maxi skirt that I got from Reformation um and it's it's just a plain black like what's just like the up and down cut the column yeah, um, just like long maxi skirt, so it's a little bit slimmer. And I've been wearing it with like, you know, I think with sneakers and with like denim jackets and with leather jackets. It's a piece that really challenged me when I bought it because I was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know how much wear you're gonna get at this because you don't really wear dresses. Um, but I feel really great in it every time I wear it. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a nice way because my fi I find my aesthetic and my style is like definitely more masculine. So I just to keep it a little bit more balanced, more like yin and yang, I like to find ways to keep it a little bit more feminine. And so like if I'm wearing like all denim and sneakers and, uh, you know, just a plain tank top or something or even a t-shirt, then like 
you know, throwing on the skirt is like that unexpected little bit of contrast and mm -hmm. way I can like build tension and add some more femininity into it while still staying true to my style, which I really, really like. So yeah, she's a skirt girly now. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> so good too what about you oh me I think it would have to be I feel like there's a bunch of pieces mm -hmm. but the one that comes to mind is the the purple like the lavender fringe skirt I've had it for ages like 12 13 years it's like you were saying like it's more of an occasion piece but so I don't wear it all the time I'll wear it like maybe two three times a year mm -hmm. but the amount of times it's come in handy like yeah. it's like a last minute gala or like now like you know where it comes in most handy is like I said like a last minute event where I know I can wear a button-up shirt a denim shirt I can wear my bustier if I want to dress it up I can wear like everything it's one of those pieces where like you buy it it looks like a muppet okay like it actually <laughs> no like it looks like a muppet oh and so I think to to most people you'd be like when am I gonna wear this but the it's not as so, sometimes, you know, like we talk about like usability, da, 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 but how many times have I not had to worry about an outfit? And to yeah. me, the, 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 like the mental load that that skirt has alleviated for me is like bananas. It's like, like a it's a go to. Yeah, and I don't yeah. care. Like you change it up so many times. It's a skirt. Like, I don't care if people re see me in it. It's fabulous. Why would I like, I want people to see me in that you skirt. Repeating. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Oh, would like to know the differences between Scandi style minimalism and Canadian style. Or do they overlap? Are they different? Okay. And how? I like they are very different. And I would also like to know how important natural fibers are to sustainability. And we were talking about this before, so I think that's a really good question. Yeah. Um, shall we start with Canadian versus? Yeah. Tell me a little Scandi. bit about. I Canadian. can't. I can't. It makes me too sad. You live in a really cool city, Christina. I think you have a more accurate. <laughs> There's oh, like a there's like a sound how to dress like a Toronto girly and it's like well I feel like there's two types right there's like the main okay the main type I see is okay Toronto's a very walkable city it's very commuter but I think there's different like there's different styles so I feel like there's like more boho hip kind of like hip yeah like hipster and then there's your I think Toronto I would say ultimately it's a very athleisure city so um, we really combine like your athletic, athletic wear, walkable, walkability vibes, um, like some very functional pieces with, and that's like the main focus. So mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of, uh, I, I see a lot of like leggings, sneakers, hoodies, and then like a long overcoat or even a puffer right now. It's like a puffer, um, short or long, both, yeah, both. Yeah, both. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's like it's very functional and very comfortable. Mm. And then the other thing I see a lot is like full on sweatsuits. So very, again, very comfortable, like, but it'll be a full set. And then, you know, they'll do like the slick back bun and the, the uh, you know, like cute earrings and stuff like that. But it's very athletic athleisure. That and like blundstones. Everyone yeah. wears blundstones. <laughs> Silhouette of my boot. It's, it's almost, like a Chelsea boot. It's like a Chelsea boot. Oh, okay. chunky. Chunkier. But more okay. like a, yeah, it's meant for like. Short ankle. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like a hiking boot, yeah, but yeah. like a little bit more sleek. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that with jeans mm -hmm. and like, I want to say plaid, but that's like. <laughs> um, but that's a very that's a very specific aesthetic. That's maybe like a 20s, 2015 Toronto mm -hmm. vibe. <laughs> Everyone wore blundstones and that back in the day. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I have to say, sorry, I was I was being mean earlier, but like if you go, it's I I have like Canada is such a huge country. Yes. That like geographically too, the the weather and the climate is completely different, and so it's it's very different even in any of the provinces oh, yeah. and cities. Oh, like, yes. And like, and the vibe too, like Toronto is that and Montreal is very European, like a yes, really, sure. really good style in Montreal, yeah. right? Like, and you get every, you see everything. There's like dressed, it's like, I find people in Quebec have a similar pride of um, like their physical appearance as they do, like we were talking about here in Denmark mm -hmm. and like, they really, it runs the gamut and it's just, it's very artistic. I think Quebec in particular uh, is very artistic. So you'll see like a lot of like independent, like you can't place what people are wearing because there's just so much like independent brands and designers and locally made things, which is very, very cool. Um, and in Ottawa, everyone just wears Patagonia or a 
you know, everyone's functional. Because yeah. everyone's <laughs> hiking, biking, or skiing. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's it. That's what we do. And not to stereotype it. Obviously, all these cities are very diverse, and yeah, yeah. like you know. Um, but yeah, if you did like the TikTok sound, how to dress like a Toronto girly, like that's, you know, it would be Lululemon or like the Aritzia, like the full on jumpsuit, nice. some kind of puffer and like, that's the vibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about Scandi? Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, there's a stereotypical, like if you Google Scandi style, it's very much like the monochromatic, like neutral, like very much the stereotypical capsule wardrobe, I think, like wool coat light wash jeans like a pair of white sneakers and like a gray sweater or something, like very stereotypical mm -hmm. i feel like it's that is very much how many people dress here i think it is very much part of the the whole aesthetic but like you say it's not to put it all like into like one box because people dress however they want but yeah. um and then as we also talked about in the previous episode or one of the previous episodes like there i feel like the, the contrasting element of like keeping it keeping things functional keeping it stylish oh sorry practical practical functional but still having that element of style so not going all in on like athletic like i'm going to the gym kind of yeah, thing but yeah. still There's keeping that those contrasts yeah. of like that more stylish element yeah. the other thing i would say too is like it's almost like a at least i've noticed like it, it's almost there's kind of like an east coast and west coast yeah. uh, like so i feel like like you know toronto is like considered east coast so it's a lot of black dark colors but when I went to like Vancouver or Victoria, people wear a lot of brights because it's so cloudy and rainy oh, yeah. Um, yeah. all the time. And so it's like you want something to like brighten up your your day and your yeah, style kind right. of thing. Yeah. Where I think here, like people are not afraid to wear like really, the weather here is, uh, yeah, they're not afraid to wear like color, but they're also not afraid to wear gloomy things because mm -hmm. then we... Yeah, you use other things. Like yeah, you have the yes. other, like, then you go into a sweet little cafe, which is can be really dark, but the lighting is perfect because it's the perfect warm color mm -hmm. and, like, you get a nice cup of coffee and that kind of makes up for everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then the other part of that question uh, was the, how important are natural fibers to sustainability? Yeah. Let's talk about that. We talked about it this morning. Yes. Yeah. You want to start? Yeah, so we actually talked about, like, let, let's take polyester, for example. Um, people are very, like, afraid of polyester, which I completely get. Like, it's made from non-renewable yeah, from non -renewable sources. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but we kind of forget, like, the functional, like, the longevity aspect sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. and I think people get really angry about the fact that, for example, high-end brand will take, like, polyester and make, like, a suit in polyester. Mm -hmm. But we forget that, okay, well, it's not necessarily all bad because polyester is actually quite strong and durable. And sometimes like making even these, this mix of fibers with a little bit of polyester can make the piece stronger and last longer. Yeah. So I think it's about like broadening the discussion and, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about durability too. Yeah. And like we need, you know, polyester, nylon, uh, all those synthetics in it's the function of it too like mm -hmm. you know if you need waterproof resistance mm -hmm. uh like parkas quick drying, quick drying. Yeah. so like your athletic gear is very important yeah. um to have that like so it depends i think um i think at least for me i try to look as for as many natural fibers as possible when things are going to be close to my body for example t-shirts and uh tank tops things like that because you can breathe better. because it breathes and because yeah. i'm a sweaty gal you know yeah, so yeah. um and and the other thing i i kind of one friend of mine brought something up she's like i can't wear wool cashmere at all i am so allergic mm -hmm. so everything i wear is acrylic unfortunately so it I mean not unfortunately but like unfortunately for her she and she's like I want to wear these mm -hmm. things but I can't so like um there's other you know it creates options for others and I think I you know ultimately yeah it's the the the, the global picture is that you know yeah these synthetics are going to be around longer than we are um but I think functionally when a wearer is using something there is purpose for yeah. it exactly and when you and i think the idea is to use the right 
fabric for the right purpose that that's like yeah. the trick from as the opposed to cutting corners and like because because that is a problem right like a lot of recycle brands... dress like sorry recycle polyester dress where's the point in that right it's not necessary mm -hmm. do you have to use polyester for that yeah yeah so i think i think the where the problem lies is like when they're using it to cut corners exactly. and like because a lot of brands i've noticed will like they used to do all like wool or like a wool elastane blend and now it's fully synthetic and it's like this is obviously to save money yeah. exactly and make the piece cheaper for the customer and like yeah. yeah and i think also part of the problem is that we focus on the end of this the not part of the problem but let's focus on the the amount of time we wear it like yeah. the, the the life of the piece <clears throat> yeah. because a lot of the conversation also shift shifted to like okay but i choose natural because it's biodegradable yes. so we're already yeah. there focusing on like and it's good you know it's good to yeah, think so that way but it's also like Okay, but what about the amount the <laughs> the period where you're actually wearing the piece? Yeah, because I've even bought like a bought is that a word? I've purchased uh, like a one hundred percent. Like I realized, I think I like, for example, my tank tops. I like a little bit of elastane in there. Mm -hmm. I've purchased a full one hundred percent cotton tank, and um, it doesn't give me the form fitting, figure hugging, mm -hmm. the shape that I'm looking for, and it shrunk up quite a bit. Mm -hmm which like bums me out. So it's kind of like, and now that, so now because, and it's fantastic that that piece is now 100% cotton. Let's say if I get rid of it, it's going to break down all that. But like, I'm not wearing it as much as I would have wanted to yeah. um, because of that. So it's, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a very nuanced conversation. Yeah. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question to answer in a way that's going to be like solid and pleasing to everyone but i really think it's about like what do you need from the garment yeah. and what are you i think the purpose the point of view is uh is like the yeah, best the yeah. yeah and i thought the cutting corners point too yeah. was really is really important yeah. yeah and it's like another way that you can see if a brand is cutting corners is like when there's so many blends when you see like wool polyester rayon da, 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 like that's an obvious one as well yeah. and i think the only point that I would add to answer that question is also, um, like, yes, natural fibers are renewable just from this, you know, if we look at wool, like, yes, sheep, more sheep can be born. But I think it this question made me think of, like, again, the overarching issue, in my opinion, with sustainability and fashion is the overconsumption piece. Mm -hmm. So we could transfer every garment into bamboo, cotton, wool, all of these natural things. But the point is, is, if we are continuing to consume at the rate and volume we currently are, then we're still going to deplete our resources and this isn't a sustainable business yeah. model. Like, yeah, yeah so, right, like that's the problem with cashmere now, exactly. right? Like all of your modern cashmere is not going to be as high quality because because the goats aren't happy. Yeah. And they're and then they're they are overgrazing and it's causing exactly. problems with the ecosystem exactly. and so it's like there's so much nuance with, like we think that this is like the black and white solution but there's just so much complexity that goes in that it's like over my head and I you know so it's a, yeah yeah it's a very yeah multifaceted. It's a great question yeah. and I just th and there are so many like you said so many layers to it but I think it's always I don't know that brought that came to my mind when we answered that. Um, yes, travel blog, it's coming. <laughs> um, okay, uh, lifestyle shift. So recently retired from corporate, struggling to adjust my style and wardrobe to a new lifestyle. Could you cover tips and tricks for this type of major lifestyle shift? And I think maybe we can touch on like any lifestyle shift, like yeah. maybe when you have a baby, like I think we had a couple questions about like, I'm a new mom, how do I adjust yeah. to all of this? What are your thoughts? I think like uh, kind of doing the wardrobe edit all over again, mm. where you like go through, you know, what you are actually wearing right. and what, what, because it will make you realize what new requirements you have for your wardrobe mm -hmm. and what requirements you've kind of outgrown. Mm. So even if you're not like satisfied with your current wardrobe, I think that's always the best approach. Like just filter it and get that stuff out. Yeah. Have a look at it, analyze it. If there's if there are gaps, figure out what the gaps are. Yeah, yeah, so smart. Um, but also like just the whole like picture yourself in the difference, like especially from a mom's perspective. Like when I put together outfits, it's like 
am I going to be with my kid today or not? Or how much am I going to be with yeah. my kid today? <laughs> or even if I'm walking the dog, okay, where will I be going? How's the weather? Like, you know, will I be going through the forest? Like, where will I be? Like, picture your day and like figure out what requirements do I have and what can I do with what I have? What do I need to... Yeah. So I think it's like if it sounds like if she did she say she went from corporate to Cor- uh, retire, a corporate to retired. Yeah. So I guess like with corporate, I, I hear a lot of like maybe there's a lot of like button up shirts and blazers and trousers. And I think is there a way to uh, integrate those into your style that's a little bit more dressed down? So maybe you don't do the full on suit, mm-hmm. but like, you know, you wear the trousers with a sleeker pair of sneakers mm-hmm. and, a, and a hoodie if you want yeah, to yeah, or yeah, like yeah. um or do the blazer with a hoodie or a sweatshirt or something that's a little bit more casual. So like, what are the ways that you can, uh, again, we talk about that making the wardrobe feel seamless and Mm -hmm. like blurred together. So instead of being like, these are all my work pants and my work outfits, how do I take these to the cafe on a weekend? Um, I think that's, and, and finding, I think also just finding maybe like if those pieces of feel too fussy or too tight or too precious, then, you know, maybe it is an opportunity to declutter some pieces and then find some, uh, and then fill those new gaps with like more comfortable, versatile pieces that still feel elevated that can take you out of the house, but you can also wear, wear in. So like, I mean, I feel like the pants you're wearing are great. Alyssa's wearing a pair of like, and I love that they're they're sleek yes. here, but, but they're, they're stretched. Ex- that's exactly I'm what actually, I'm going to suit like, you're gonna make your own. I'm going to make my own pair of exactly like this. Yeah, of course because you then, you know, when you're doing a half so tuck, it's like polished, yeah, yeah. but then no, comfy. The best things I've ever... And guess what? They're polyester, just so you know. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Alyssa, for those who are listening, Alyssa's wearing a pair of wide leg black trousers. They are full length. And then the front is like your very polished, um, you know, uh, eyelet. What is, what's that? It's like a placket. It's just like a... Um... Yeah, like similar to like a classic like, tailor trouser. Yeah, tailor like just a trouser. trouser. But then yeah. the back is elasticated and cinchy. So mm-hmm. are they feet. stretchy? Yeah, they're a little they're stretchy. A little stretchy yeah. But yeah. they have press folds still, which yes. is that element which, of like yeah. pressy. So I love a, I think, you know, people like cringe when they hear the word elevated basic, mm-hmm. but I, that's kind of what I think of, mm-hmm. like where it can be sort of multifaceted. So I would wear those with a pair of sneakers, but I would wear them with a pair of pumps yeah, if I wanted totally. to. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think finding pieces like that is really helpful. Yeah. yeah. And I think also, I mean, perhaps this is just in the case of going from corporate to retired and maybe less so other lifestyle changes, but perhaps give yourself like a year's period because Mm -hmm. from what I've seen of people who are retiring, like my parents, like you don't, maybe you don't know what your retired life is going to look like yet. Like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like maybe, yeah. Acclimate, give yourself that year and Mm -hmm. see what, what it looks like for you because then you'll get more data when you actually do that closet edit, yes. yeah. you'll you'll know what your average day looks like. Like right yeah. now, you can't really answer that question. So same with like maternity wear, even like it's mm. a lot of people get into like maternity fashion and then what pieces should I buy and then like wait, like just let your body yeah tell you tell you what yes you because it's probably not going to be what you think. So yeah. just like yeah. give it time. That's a good point. Yeah. I'd love to hear about how your fashion journeys have influenced the people in your life. Are your parents, partners, siblings, friends more aware of sustainable fashion or do they have their own three words or do they buckle down on not being fashion because you are? I've had various reactions since getting into sustainable fashion and I would love to be to hear about your experiences. It's mm. an interesting one, eh? Yeah, I actually, um, I w- went to get my nails done before the trip mm-hmm. and I was talking to, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> I was talking to my, uh, my my nail lady about this and she was like, yeah, she just finds it really hard to like wear the same thing twice, like for an event, for example. And I think the question is really like how bad you want to like try to be part of the solution to like more responsible mm-hmm. consumption or, and I'm not saying like never buy anything, but then at least figure out like, okay, well then can I maybe borrow a dress next time instead of like buying a new one or like trying to explore how you can be part of the solution? Yeah, Yeah. what I would say to that too is almost like no one really remembers what you wear and it's like, you know you wore it, but maybe it was like to this wedding where you don't know anybody. So we're like, why not wear it to the next place? Mm -hmm. Especially if it made you feel good. It just kind of bums me out to know that I would only wear something one time. Mm And, yeah, and it also builds into that whole signature style, like wear it with pride yeah, and exactly. as part of your yeah. self. 
okay, so how we have influenced people in our lives. It's, honestly, it doesn't really come up for me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I guess, well, I've influenced my sister because she gets a lot of my hand-me-downs and then I get a lot of hers. Like, if she has, like, a Poshmark fail, then she'll <laughs> she'll pass nice. it on to me before reposhing it or something like that. Or, like, if I'm decluttering, she goes through it. So, um I feel like we've helped each other's style evolve and like I help push her a little bit because mm -hmm. sometimes because she's you know she's a mom too and she's like you know I want to be like so she, I think for a bit she kind of got stuck in that like leggings rut or like I don't want to stain anything kind of mm -hmm. so you sort of just you're more functional than feeling fashionable and now she's like exploring a little bit more and uh and that's really, really fun. But like for in terms of parents or like my partner, Jeff, like Jeff is like a minimalist and like a oh, sustainable, yeah. cool. I want to say sustainable queen, <laughs> sustainable king, go babe. Um, he's, he's really gotten into things like selvage denim, um, which is about like, so it's raw denim and the whole the whole like uh, appeal of raw denim is to wear it so much that you basically customize how it fades. Mm -hmm. So it's about buying one pair of jeans and then wearing them yes. for years to get that to get that fade and that customization. So um, he has a much smaller wardrobe than I do. He's much more of a sustainable consumer than I am, especially in that way. So I think he like almost influences me. Can we just take a second and point out like Jeff wasn't isn't like oh, I'm gonna be doing this da 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 da. This no. is just his way of being, yeah. Yes. Which is yeah. I think that's really neat and I think cool to point out. Also, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much it trickles out and actually like sparks like doing something mm -hmm. in like my network. But I think people like when I tell people what I do, they find it really inspiring. And like mm -hmm. sometimes people will be like, oh, can you come do my closet or like, can yes. you come do yeah. my colors yeah, one day? For yeah, stuff. I which I think is a yeah. it's a great example of how busy people are, too. Like we've talked yeah. about yeah. the the whole thing about having time like we yeah. do this as like part of our living so too so we have all. yeah we have a lot of time yeah. <laughs> totally. whereas other people are just like so busy yeah, so yeah. i think they want to but yeah. it's hard to find the time i'd like to know wait but you haven't seen friends but i'd like to know who's phoebe who's monica <laughs> and who's rachel as it relates to attitude style and life and you should dress up as your respective friends character love it thank you <laughs> Uh, you can tell me who I'd be. I don't I feel know. like you're Monica. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never watched Friends. Sorry. Monica's like go-getter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she is. Maybe not so much in terms of style. Your style's cooler than Monica. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know who I'd be. I think I want to do. Okay, after this, can we do Sex in the City? Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do all yeah. the Friends. No, do the Friends the because you know. But no, I do Friends, and then I want to know. Okay. Who I feel like I'm a mix between Monica and Rachel because in terms of like keeping things neat and like you know having like we're doing this at this time and we're like mm -hmm. like you know I'm very um, organized. I would say similar to Monica, mm -hmm. probably not as Are you anal. A I think I'm like the, mostly I know, I know a Phoebe, like a probably, <laughs> probably yeah, Phoebe, like maybe with a bit of Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. mostly Phoebe, <laughs> just crazy. And if we're doing Sex in the City, yeah, I'm I'm a Miranda for sure. Yes, okay. I'm a hard ass and just like very like matter of fact and like, yeah, yeah. I'd say I'm a Miranda. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who I would be. I don't think I've watched it enough to know. Ah, really? <laughs> <laughs> maybe Charlotte. I don't know. Maybe Charlotte. Yeah, I think a little bit Charlotte. A little bit like softer and a little yeah, bit yeah. more like skeptical but you, but, and like but you know what you want you have firm boundaries because yes, charlotte did, did charlotte yeah, was 100%. like yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah she still right. had like a good strength yeah yeah i have no idea I vibrant like samantha Sam really yeah. great I was, I was gonna say samantha but i wasn't sure i was like i don't know maybe not excellent that was a great question yeah loved it i'll dress up as samantha all, too late but are we all like fashion lovers like oh, fashion. yeah yes i think so that's like the common denominator yeah. oh this is a good one i'd love to hear about when is it enough and how do you stop yourself shopping unnecessary items i think it's about eliminating the stimulus for what tempts you and then what makes you feel like you don't have enough and for me, that is an immediate, it's social media, mm -hmm. full on, like get off social media if you're feeling that way. And then I think it's, a, it's like, I tell it to myself, I'm like, you need to go touch grass, AKA go touch your wardrobe because, um, I feel like whenever, from, from my process of shopping, it's, it goes from lists like, 
idyllic, like I'm going to wear this all these different ways. And I can, I create all these scenarios of like, you know, this is going to be great here. And this is going to go with this. And like, there's very intentional questions that you can ask, but when you're feeling like, I think in your gut, you know, if this is like, I'm being, I'm like happy to do this versus like, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like this is maybe this is I'm shopping for another reason right but like I feel like being online all the time it just creates these new wants and this new feeling of like being behind where you just really need for me I need to like go back to my wardrobe and realize that I have so many clothes like more clothes that I could wear uh and just start playing with them and wearing them and like I think it really grounds you and brings you back to yourself and then Because honestly, like, there's no better feeling of being like, I feel great in what I'm wearing. I like, I feel confident. I feel like, uh, just like, just good. And just, yeah, it's like a self-confidence, you know, you kind of strut and it's like, I have a good wardrobe. I have what I need. Um, and I think that's something that you need to constantly working on because there's just things around us all the time that are going to say that it's not enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also, I don't think you just like magically wake up one day and be like, I'm ah, good. I have enough now. Yeah. 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 And yeah. life changes and then you wear that piece out. And then like, yeah. I think, yeah, it's more of a feeling of being like content and like yeah. satisfied. And then even then you might need to make a few changes like I've been you know I'm very content with my style in my wardrobe so in that sense I feel very satisfied I don't feel like I need to add like new types of aesthetics or styles but then I will like I will like buy improvements in some of like for example my jeans okay those are too tight now so I'm gonna replace them with a new pair that feels more comfortable yeah yeah Yeah, I think to both of your points For me, it's like, I think it's also important to admit, like, or find what enough means to you. Um, Because I think as humans, we will always want more in that sense. Like, we're always going to, we're, yeah, we're hunter gatherers. We like the novelty. And I think it's like both to both of your points, like when you feel like you are enough as a human, and this is like very existential and like self work and Oprah and blah, blah. But ultimately, like, if you, are content and realize that you are enough as a human just showing up as you are then I think you'll find the things in your the the external things in your life are also enough like Mm -hmm. my closet I'm satisfied I have what I need you both said this like you look at your closet and you feel satisfied and you feel content and it's like when you love what you have you have what you need kind of thing and I don't know I I know I have enough in my closet just personally when when I buy a piece and I'm not excited about it. I also think it's a matter of knowing you have enough when you, when you feel content, when you've made a purchase, but it's very, it feels very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, my Loewe puzzle, or I just recently purchased a Smythe blazer. And I think this is helpful where when you have a list and you don't really buy right away, when you've given yourself that space, Mm -hmm. it's almost like, so I bought this blazer. It had been on my list for six, seven months. And I had it on my list. I knew I really wanted it. And when I finally bought it, like, I didn't get the dopamine rush. Mm. I didn't, you know, like, it was nice. I was happy. Yeah, like, I was happy that it came in. But, like, I opened the box. I put it in my thing. And I was like, great. Like, now I have this blazer. The end. Yeah, I actually you know? liked that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it didn't add anything to my life. It, yes, it does. Like, I'm obsessed with it. Like, I've worn it with Bob. Like, look at this blazer. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, really it's amazing. <laughs> and I love it. But it's not... It's just, it's still me. It's just me in a really great blazer, you know? Like it. I completely yeah. relate, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I replaced my Veja sneakers recently. A little bit of a different model than the previous one or the style than the previous one. But I wasn't like dying to open the box yeah. when I got home. It was like, yeah. oh, cool, they came. Right. Yeah, because I think the other part of her question was like, she feels very satisfied with her wardrobe, but also struggles with, like she's continuing to shop and she's feeling bad yeah. about it. So I think it's like really doing a lot of inner like there's some inner work that needs to be done there in the sense of like not just you know and I'm sure you're doing it but it's it's like um what are what's pushing you to shop what's pushing you to want and like Mm -hmm. is there another way to channel that or like what what needs to heal Mm -hmm. and it could be perfectionism Mm -hmm. because shopping is like 
you know, we all enjoy it. We all still do it. It's a way to evolve your wardrobe. Um, and I don't think it's anything to feel guilty about unless it's like, you know, something that's like, you know, you know, to yourself, you're like, okay, I'm lying to myself about something, or I'm really like, I'm spending outside of my finances. I'm spending outside of my space to hold things. Um, and I think it's maybe taking, finding ways to get out of a set, out of a scarcity mindset, because I think a lot of times what, what we're requiring is like, either you don't feel it's again, that, that feeling of enoughness, like something doesn't feel like enough in what you have now. Um, and I think it honestly, like it takes just simple getting, putting your phone down and like going to your closet and being like, Oh no, this word will work for that. Let me try it. And let me like take that time and do, do the thing, take, take that action it can take you out of that sense of wanting um, and that feeling of discontent. Like, think about it this way. It's also in a contentment can be a fleeting feeling, but so can discontentment. Mm, right. So true. allowing yeah, yourself to just like, yeah, even just hormonal it. cycles, yeah, course, like yeah. we talk, like yeah. not sleeping, not eating, yeah. Yeah. like, Hungry. but it's like this too shall pass. Yeah. It's temporary. Right? Everything is temporary. Yeah. yeah. I think all of that can really help. And Gratitude. Gratitude. Yes. <laughs> Gratitude is the attitude. Okay, I think we have time for one. One more. Question. Okay. 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 Maybe we'll finish this with this one because I also feel like Christina, you're kind of like you're a really good expert in this. <laughs> Are certain items not worth spending more on in your wardrobe? White tees, for example. Like I, I just I thought of you because you've done those yeah. like bait like these are the good ones. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It depends. Um, it depends what you want in a white tee. I do agree. Like I kind of have a where I spend versus where I save. And that comes with the caveat that one, everything can be thrifted. And two, it's really relative to what you feel like, what your budget is and what you want to spend. But for a t-shirt, I've actually changed my mindset on it in the sense of I will spend a little bit more, but by a little bit more, I mean like $40 on a t-shirt as opposed to like $5 on a t-shirt. And that's because I haven't found a five dollar t-shirt that kept the shape yes yeah because yeah. so like for example with a t-shirt what i'm looking for is like i want it to be slightly thicker but not you know some sheerness is okay um but i'm looking for like i like a higher collar crew neck and i like the and i want the collar to hold up so usually i want it to be like a thicker collar if i pull it it bounces back mm -hmm. it doesn't warp after i wash it mm -hmm. and get all weird and like wobbly mm -hmm. um so and I've had to spend a little bit more money on that. But like, I feel like $40 for a high quality t-shirt is like the max. Like once you're getting into like a $100, $200 t-shirt, I haven't seen a difference. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I think so it really does depend what you're looking for. And then like, for example, I mean, a lot of my pieces that I, you know, the, some of them are higher end, but I know part of it is because I'm paying for a name. Mm -hmm. Even though the quality and construction is great, um, you know, I, there's a diminishing returns after that like you, you it depends what you're paying for after a certain point in yeah. terms of the quality and the material and that kind of thing yeah, yeah that makes any sense. thoughts yeah, I agree yeah. as a designer what would you say mm. is there any like certain constructions or certain pieces that like should cost more just mm. out of a construction perspective and design perspective I guess just like <laughs> details right now. yeah and like because there's also the longevity aspect like how long are like for example a white t-shirt it will get stained and like it's yeah. you know how, so in that sense, whereas, you know, if it's like a suit or something that you can carry with you through many years, then... So it's like a cost per wear thing too, yeah, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, good point. But I think like a $40 t-shirt that you wear like a bunch of times a week yeah. and then you wear out in six months or get stained in six months, I still think that's a great cost per yeah, wear. Yeah. There's also the whole discussion about that then keeping it in good shape. Like mm -hmm. I'm not saying that necessarily like using harsh bleaches on it to like keep it white but like yeah. okay how can I maintain it so it keeps Just looking nice here. yeah mm -hmm. I think that's that's good I thought both of your answers were so good for that one yeah what cool uh no I mean I think uh, similar to you Christina like the the thrifting was your caveat I mm -hmm. I don't really just I don't really look at budget as my starting off point like yeah. I'll just look at the garment quality so and I'll look at my list so if I'm looking for like right now on my list there's a pair of like a loafer for example I'm not like I don't have a specific loafer in mind that I want so like budget isn't I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna look for exactly what I need 
And then when I'm on the spot, I'll decide, is this worth it? Yeah. Is it, that's, 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 my that's a good point. That's a good, um, a good yeah. process too, I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I think those were some fantastic questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so and we will definitely be doing more of these. So if you have more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Make sure to like, subscribe, rate the podcast. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, it really helps us out. And we'll see you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for joining in our conversation this week. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and Apple and leave us a rating and review. It's one of the best ways to support the Sustain This podcast at zero cost to you. We're also a community-led podcast, so if you have any questions for us, topic requests, or even guests you want to hear from, please send us a DM on Instagram at sustainthis underscore podcast. We read all of our comments and look forward to hearing from you. We hope you join us again next Tuesday, where we'll talk about so much more than clothes. Ciao!